Truman, I've been watching your ride, and I really think you could do with a little narrower bar. We need to cut those things down. Are you crazy? No, but I have noticed those trees have been jumping in your way a lot. And are those doorways getting narrower and narrower? You gotta remember, there's a relationship between your shoulders, your arm length, and your bars. And yours are just too wide. We need to cut those down. There's gotta be a better way, Calvin. There is. There's more than a couple of methods to determine how wide your bars should be. Let's hear some of your methods in the comments below. So here's just two of ours. What we're gonna do is have Truman think about riding that perfect flow, that perfect trail, closing his eyes, reaching forward with his hands where they want to be. Home. I think this is the right spot, Calvin. Happy steering. This is the excess we have. We don't want to cut that full amount off. We're going to round out a little bit because it's easy to cut things off, but hard to cut things on. So we're going to get a tape measure here. We're looking at 30 millimeters extra. Eh, let's, let's cut off just 20. Be conservative. A different technique relies on how we like to apply pressure where we're comfortable with force. Truman, give me five, five push-ups. Oh, all right. Where do his hands land when he's comfortable? Do it. We want to see where they're comfortable doing push-ups. Adjust your hands as needed, but here we're pretty much 700. Truman, we got our handlebar holder on, holding things steady. Time to get this stuff out of the way so we can get to work. You All do that right. side, I'll do this side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's leave that side so we can have it as a template so we can get these back to okay. what our preferred control positions are. What a good idea. So All take right. that off there. I'll loosen these. Okay. All right. Can we just use a pipe cutter to cut this? Well, let's see. It is a kind of tubing, so it can work. But if that wall is really thick, the wheel is going to bottom out. It's not going to work. They can also you leave a flare, so you'll have to trim that around as well. All right. But if they're carbon fiber, definitely do not use a pipe cutter. OK, Truman, if I remember, we're saying 20 millimeters. We want to come in 20. Yep. So let's go ahead here with the uh, Tape measure 22 centimeters, 20. I think I'm good there. Can you get a, yep, yep you're think, good there, right good. there, okay. And, ow, darn it. I'm, I'm sorry, let's try it again. There, there has to be a better way, Truman. I think there is. I think okay. we have a couple of tools. The SG 7.2 saw guide. This one has a fat crust and thin crust. I mean, a wide blade and a skinny blade. What kind of blade we got here? We've got a bimetal blade, 24 TPI for this aluminum handlebar. Aluminum, what else would we use that blade for? You can use this for titanium or steel as well. Mm -hmm. 18 TPI will work for aluminum, tire, steel also. That's right. So the wide setting here, that is for our grit style for the carbon compatible blades. It's wider, so we have the skinny and we have the wide all in one saw guide. So we want to install this, and to set the cut, well, how finicky do we want to be? Pretty finicky? Uh, let's be finicky today. We got a millimeter, eh, 0.96 millimeter blade. So we want to cut off 20, so I'm going to make this, let's see, 19, dial it up for 19, and lock it down. This is 19, this is 19. But we're cutting 20. That's right. So we engage, engage the blade. I put this on the end. We slide on over till touching, and we can lock it down. Truman, before we get going, let's talk a little hack smack. Hacksaw use. First, check out your equipment and that blade. We want a good blade. We don't want one with missing teeth. Good sharp teeth. You can check the front, you feel some sharp ones, the middle, not so good. Also, make sure it's tight and not wiggling around. We have good tension on our blade. That's an important thing. 
Good basic technique is a good forward cut with pressure. We draw back light and then forward pressure. That's our cut. So that's good. We ready, Truman? I think we're ready to go. I'm going to grab this side and steady it. All right. Fire Solid in the hole. In. At the end, we want to kind of lighten up a little bit. It's getting close to the end. And finally, we'll have a little piece falling on the floor. A little handlebar baby. 20 millimeters on the ground. Truman, we got our 19 millimeters of bar and some millimeter chips all over the place. We're going to take off the SG7.2 and we've got a little deeper in action to do. Might have a sharp edge here so we can come across with a file. Rotate that or some memory cloth can do the same thing. Just to take the edge off. So we've got some chips left in here. That's part of that millimeter we accounted for. Out with the chips. Let's use gravity to get rid of those. Off with the handlebar holder. Rotate down. There, there we, we go. go. Or wear some safety glasses and an air compressor. Looking pretty clean in there. All right. Cutting down carbon fiber, pretty much the same technique. So we want to trim down our FSA here just a little bit. We can set up our saw guide. We can bring it in, account for the thickness in the blade, and that's good. Or if we had a 32 TPI, very, very fine tooth, that can do a good job. On the saw guide here, we'd be using the thin section. But today, we're gonna to be using the CSB-1 by Park Tool. It is a grit style that we can both push and pull with to cut. And we're gonna be using the thick side of the guide. That's right. So me, I'm on spray duty. We worried about the heat? No, we're worried more about the dust coming off of the handlebar while we're cutting. That's right. If you can smell that stuff, it ain't good for you. Ready to rock and roll? Yep. A little bit of soapy water, any kind of window cleaner, almost anything. We're hearing the noise change. And you're getting close like a piece of wood, that last little bit, easy on the strokes. That last little chunk there. Oh, and we have a? A new handlebar baby. Of carbon Let's fiber. in the world. <laughs> so on the ground, we can see all of this stuff here. That black stuff would have been up in the air, breathing it. We're now ready to remove our saw guide. And things are going to be a little messy. We may want to clean them up. And definitely here, some emery or sandpaper. Good for the cleanup at the end. Take those sharp, any sharp edges off. Not a good place for a file. Time to get our grips back on. We've got our grips back on. Time to set our brake and shift levers. Here, we have a integrated system. One bolt here allows rotation, independent rotation for the shifter, and then medial and lateral are in and out movement of our shifter, two positions only. What do you have? I have two straps, one specifically for the brake lever, one specifically for the shift levers. There's two positions on the shifter, so you can kind of control where that strap is to give you a little bit more versatility. My personal preference, I like the brake strap from the outside of the grip to the inside of the strap, about 15 millimeters. The shift levers just inside and below the inside of the grip. The brake levers, while the bike's on the ground, about a 45 degree mm -hmm. angle down. I like the 45 down myself. I like my shift levers closer. When I'm easier to reach, I like to do a lot of shifting. But remember, the mechanic's role should be to change the bike around, trim it, position it for the rider. But let's hear from you. Where do you like your shifters and your brakes? Thanks for joining us. Cut. We, we already cut. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Tech Tuesdays, check out our Repair Help video library.
which has detailed guides to a wide variety of common bike maintenance procedures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from Park Tool.